What's going on guys, Victor here, and I got an absolutely epic video for you guys today. We're gonna have a giant sushi party later, but before that, I got a ton of fish in here in the angler cooler. We got a ton of different species that we caught aboard our buddy Cody's boat. We got big old blackfin tuna, stud yellowtail snapper, mutton snapper, red snapper, all caught in the beautiful Florida Keys. We went out with our buddy who's a charter captain. I will have his stuff linked in the description box below, but a lot of these videos aren't possible without sponsors, so today's video is sponsored by the Ridge Wallet. If you guys are interested in this wallet, I will have a link in the description box below, but a brief little summary, a really cool company, and I love these wallets because they're a minimalist style design. I don't like to carry a bunch of stuff when I'm fishing and traveling, so less is more when it comes to these guys. They're really sleek, they look cool, you got money clips on them, so if you guys have been carrying around that old dad wallet that's giving you back pain, go ahead, check these guys out, and you can save 10% off your order if you guys use my code LANDSHARK. They'll have up here on the screen as well as linked in the description box below. Now let's go catch some fish. Alright, neutral. Come on, stay up. Oh yeah. So what we got going on is Brooke's got a chum bag in her hand and she's shaking it periodically to try to get these pilchards to come up off of the bottom. Cody's got to time it to where they're up enough to where he can net them because we're we're in 20 feet of water and if you try to throw the net on them while they're on bottom, you're not going to get them. So he really has to time his throws, otherwise he's just going to waste his efforts. We're looking to get around 500 baits black out the live well because we're going to be out there all day. So I think he's got about one or two more throws in them and then we're going to head offshore. You think that was the final throw? Could be. It's like 150 mm. in there or something. What you doing, Cody? Feeding my pets. Trying to get the fish fired up. So what that really means is we're gonna do a few drifts, try to get on some black fins, and the way to get them around the boat is Cody's tossing handfuls of filters out. Hopefully bring them to the boat. The baits will stay around the boat. The black fins will come right up to the boat, and let's get on them. Here, you wanna take this rod up front there? Speed it out nice and fast. The fish are coming up a little ways off. South Florida workout. <laughs> it is a workout. All right, Carl, I'll check back with you later. All right. No luck at the first wreck. Carl got one fish shark. Looked like a nice fish, probably 30 plus pound blackfin. And so we're headed over to the next one. There was a ton of boats there, not a lot of blackfin. So wish us luck on the next spot. All right, guys, we are on. We're in the blackfins real, up. real heavy. Up. Sorry, go ahead. We're in the blackfins real heavy. Pulled up to this new spot. The other two didn't produce that good, but this one's doing good. And we got Carl and Jim both hooked up front. Cody's on. That's a bonita I got here. Busting on the other side too. Oh, he's got him on a little reel up there. Oh. Keep working that thing out. There's a lot of big sharks here. We got two now. No. Sharks. He doesn't want to come up because he knows he's going to get eaten. Yeah, they will stay deep. Just got sharked. Maybe I'll get the head back. It's like the tuna stay underneath the sharks. Oh, see, there it goes. Popped off. Well, we just got. At oh, Brick's on. Get him, babe. Woo! You want to? Yeah. Look at that. But fish is busted at the boat right there. You already got sharks? No. no came off. 
take this one, Brooke. Or maybe oh, not. No. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is a Benita. Look at this multitasking right there. Got him on up there? Between the legs. Oh, yeah, there was tunas busting. We've been at this new spot for all of a minute. Watch. Yep. Ready? Watch how quick this is going to happen. All right, let's see him. Oh, there watch. Is. Already. Oh, you're on. Yeah, babe. Just like that. I saw some beneath our tuna there, though. He's not very big, but he's a keeper. That's him. Well, he's a leg run. Watch out for the beam. Watch I out don't right know there. where that drag is. Oh! Okay. Right there, right there. Here he comes. He's gonna throw it in his face, right there. He's gonna eat it. Oh, oh my god. Oh. Did you get a panita? Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. This is insane. A little dolphin came up. And there's sharks. And there's lots of sharks. No shortage of sharks. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, you did. Yeah? Yeah. How you got the dolphin? You got a bite. Yeah. It's funny to watch a shark try to eat this thing. <laughs> that is a huge shark. I don't think so. It's only 30 pounds. There we go. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> Not a chance. The shark's on it. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Hooked up to a nice mahi. Pitched it. A live pilchard on this bucket over here. We just pulled up to it. Woo! There was two dolphin, but we only got one hooked up. Oh, there he goes. They didn't jump yet. Very surprised. They usually almost always jump. He's probably close enough to gaff now. There we go. There we go. That's nice my babe. Heck yeah. Brookie with the solid gaff shot. Thank you. <laughs> oh, look at them all lit up. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Does not get better than that in Florida. Look at those colors. Prettiest fish in Florida right there. Double up. Babe's got a black fin. I got a mutton probably. I think that's 30 pound, bro. Yeah, it is. Thank you, Tom. Oh, yeah, I told you they're blowing up. I'm just gonna break this off. No, try to get the head. I wanna see what that thing is. We got two black fins on now. I lost whatever I had on bottom. It got sharp. That was a nice mutton on the bottom. Yeah. But not small. You know, at one point he let go of it and I was gaining line on him and then it just. Hopefully he's a little sharp. He got too committed. I think this might be a tuna. Okay. You can really hear it, feel those big, big tail kicks with these. Right here. Well, give me a second. Nice. There we go. Thank you, Cody. Yeah. Alright, babe, I want the double. You got a nice one on. There are a few brook and I pitch one back. You get a bite. Look at that. Black and gold. Oh yeah. Just shot with their mouth opening up. Oh, you got a call on a black fin. Just don't have these pumps just don't keep up. Yeah. That collie rod's getting a workout today. Drag it's getting a workout. So that was that was him, bro. Oh, oh sharks? No, I'm just you sure? Really tight on there. Yeah. Try again. Try again. All you can do. That's what happens. No. Oh, Pull the hook. Yeah. Pull the hook. Oh. Take this one. I'm close. There's Blackie. Oh, well, look how I hooked him. Oh, wow. 
You hooked him in the eyeball. Hooked him in the eyeball. That's why he was so pissed off. Pretty fish. This bloody boat and all these tight lines is not luck. This is a result of a very good captain. So like I said, guys, check out Captain Cody. I link all of his stuff in the description box below. But I mean, in just half a day of fishing, pretty much mahi, muttons, black fins, grouper, pretty much everything you come down to the keys for and you couldn't ask for more. Yeah, you ready to gaff it? Oh, yep. Oh, this is a healthy one. Oh. That's a healthy one. That's a healthy nice. one. Nice. Nice, babe. So we just crushed the tuna. Brick caught this really big one. Check out how beautiful these fish are. You get that real gold on them. And then there's a really faint line of kind of purple blue right there. You really see it when you first catch them. Look at that. That's so sick. Doesn't get better than that. Big old black fin airplanes coming at you. So now we're going to shove them in the ice. Very important, do not let your tunas sit out in the hot sun because they will get burnt and their muscles will release a lot of, build up a lot of lactic acid. It's not good for your fish. So it's really important when you're filleting a tuna to have them ice cold. The colder a fish is, the easier it is to fillet. Now I got an eight inch Dexter fillet knife right here, soft grip, made in USA knife. Now tuna have a lot of head meat that protrudes into the head right here. So you don't want to make a slice like this. You kind of want to curve your knife into the head and you're going to follow right here around the pec fin, going down to the belly. We're going to go down here. I'm going to find the bone and I'm going to slide my knife, just the tip of it at first, alongside this dorsal fin, just right here above that dorsal fin, still just going in with the tip of my knife, making that initial outline, going all the way down to the tail. I'm going to make a little cut right here by the tail and I'm going to lift up the fillet just like that. Okay, I'm going to keep going down, keep going down. You can hear your knife running along that bone. Tuna, you kind of got to view them as four sections, as a top half and a bottom half on both sides. You're going to come over here by the peck fin, you're going to lift it up, and you're going to see a really dark line, uh, a bloodline. What you're going to do is you're going to go on one side of that bloodline, and you're going to go all the way down and go all the way down to the tail, to the middle. This is literally just going to slide off. Watch this. And there you have it. That is a beautiful top loin of a blackfin tuna and as you guys see I run my knife along here and that is all bone that is what you want to see and that's why I say you really take your time when you're learning how to fillet tuna because they are not one of the easier fish to fillet so now when you're gonna go and do this side what you can do is I would turn them around and I would start here at the base of the tail just the tip of my knife going up towards the belly and then meet the uh, cut up here so now you can lift this up and now once again feel that bone and get to that other side get to the center and now when you're going over here don't cut into the guts but go over them you're going to feel that bone and you're going to want to meet it on the other side and there you go so that's your bottom loin so this is what your end product's going to look like you got two top loins right here which we still have to trim up and skin and then you got your blackfin tuna all filleted out right there so you really got to think of these fish as two different fillet jobs you got the bottom and then you got the top. So now we're gonna skin another top loin, really holding that skin down. My left hand goes with me as I fillet. Toss that out. Now we got the same thing. We gotta take the bloodline out right here. So there's one ready to go top half loin of a blackfin. If you guys are interested in the knives that I was using today, these are all Dexter knives. They were gonna be linked in the description box below. All right guys, it is sushi time. Voiceover Vic coming at you. And now, you guys may have noticed that this video was kind of all over the place, and that's because we just caught so many fish in one day with our buddy Captain Cody that I decided to make multiple videos, multiple catch, clean, and cooks out of that day. I also want to give a big thank you to Carl and Jim from Dexter Outdoors. I never really got to thank them on video, but those were the two guys that were on the boat with us. Now, let's go make some sushi. So, the first thing I'm doing is 
making some homemade eel sauce. If you guys have ever been to a sushi joint, you may have noticed that really sugary, sweet, and thick syrup-like substance that you get on rolls or with uh, dumplings. That is eel sauce, and it's very easy to make at home. All it is is mirin, sugar, and soy sauce in pretty much equal parts. And then another thing we're gonna be making is spicy mayo, which is also really easy to make instead of having to buy. And that is just sriracha, mayonnaise, and a little bit of lime juice. And you start off with a little bit of sriracha and just keep adding until you get your desired spiciness. So the whole thing with sushi is it is pretty much just all prep work, prep work, prep work. That's everything from cutting your vegetables to the cuts of your fish. That way you have everything ready to go and assemble it. Um, sushi is definitely an explosion of colors and flavors and a lot of different vegetables work from cucumbers, avocados, carrots, which you guys will see in this video. So the first thing I'm doing is just getting my cucumbers ready for our rolls. Next up, we are going to slice some carrots and pretty much just putting everything into long thin strips to put into our rolls. And I got this badass new knife. This is actually a Dexter sashimi knife. Super stoked to be using this thing. And this is what I use to actually make the cuts of my fish. And when you're making rolls, you want long cuts, thin. But the good thing about making homemade sushi is you can put as much tuna in your roll as you want. That's the one thing is when you go out to a restaurant, usually you get skimped on the amount of tuna you get. And that's what you're really paying for. So making homemade sushi can be very time consuming, but also a really cool treat for your friends and family because you're saving a ton of money and you guys have complete control over the rolls you're making. And it's fun. You know, you really get really creative with your rolls and what you put in them and you know, there's a thousand different ways to make one different roll. So I finally chopped some of the not so nice parts of the tuna, more of the tail section, not that beautiful shoulder loin. And I'm making just a spicy tuna. You know, when you guys get a, a roll in a restaurant and it kind of looks like the tuna's minced. Well, that's what I did right there. Mixed it with some of the spicy mayo we made earlier and added some sriracha for some heat. And that's going to go into our rolls later. Now, here's a cool way to spice up your sushi night. Take a cucumber, make some slices out of it, and I'm gonna show you guys later on how we're gonna to top this guy. Now we're gonna to top those cucumber slices with bite-sized diced tuna pieces, which we're gonna mix with some sesame oil, some soy sauce, and sesame seeds a little bit later. That is about the size and consistency of our dices. Now avocado is the perfect fat to pair with your lean, protein which is the tuna in your sushi or sashimi whatever it may be and it's also a very colorful way to spice up your sushi so we're gonna do two things with this we had some avocado slices which are going in our rolls and then I'm dicing some avocado which is going to go into the tuna mixture of the diced tuna add those sesame seeds like I told you guys about sesame oil and then you could also add sriracha if you wanted to this and this is what we're gonna top our cucumber slices with Now my fiance Brooke also did her own sushi night video which I will have linked in the description box below. And if you guys haven't liked this video yet, what the heck you doing? Please give it a big thumbs up if you guys want to see more videos like this. Now let's make some rolls. So what you guys just saw was a spicy tuna roll. That is our spicy tuna mixture that we created earlier. Put in some scallion in there and then uh, the, all the avocados. It's just whatever you want to put in, you know, cream cheese, avocado, scallion. Whatever your heart desires can go in and out of your sushi roll. And one thing that you can experiment with like this is we put avocado slices on the outside. You gotta use saran wrap though when you cut it so that way they stay put. And if you guys are longtime subscribers of this channel, one thing you know I'm big on is learning and getting better at your craft. And that includes presentation the aesthetic of your dish, which is one thing I'm really trying to push this year on the channel, as well as the cinematography. So drop a comment below. Let me know what you guys think. And I want to thank you guys for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a big thumbs up if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel and look forward to a ton of videos from this trip, including giant amberjacks, more tuna action, muttons, huge yellow tails, and just everything the Keys has to offer. Another big thank you to Captain Cody and the guys from Dexter Outdoors. I will have all of their stuff linked in the description box below. Until that next video, guys, I'll be seeing all you guys, my land charts, in that next video.